we're just getting ready, so um, while we just do that, um, just a little bit of background. You've read in the um, in the biography um, about each of us, where we come from, and what we do. Um, I did start. It says that I worked in a hyphen teacher. Um, it actually originally said a one teacher. Um, that's why I started in a one teacher school with eight kids. Uh, it was the highlight of my career. I was the principal, I was the teacher. I can tell you how to get rid of snakes out of pit toilets. Um, all sorts of wonderful things. And it actually, um, each of us have said this today, and I think it's, a, it's interesting, each of us have talked about our beginnings of our career and how that's influenced the way that uh, we've approached education. But I learnt then all about kids working together. I couldn't teach seven grades at the one time to eight kids. So the kids worked together and the kids helped each other. Um, and that was a model that stood me in great stead when I went to work uh, as a special education teacher after I'd been in mainstream teaching. Um, and uh, like Jerome, I, I had a, a night job. My night job was teaching literacy and numeracy um, to uh, young adults in a technical college. Um, which I found really challenging because it's one thing to actually work with literacy and numeracy problems in young children. It's another thing to work with um, 20 and 30 year olds um, who have come to the realisation that their kids are literate and they're not. Um, so that was a challenge. My last job before I um, moved to um, Flinders University, I ran an early intervention program um, from birth to six um, for uh, young families of children with disabilities. And that was sort of yet another completely different um, set of ways of dealing with people and so on. So um, my view of the world is that the more different settings that I've worked in and the more different jobs I've that I've had over time, um, the better you start to understand some issues around behaviour. Uh, and, and of course, one of the great challenges of working at tertiary institution is the behaviours that one has to deal with in that environment, but I'll leave that till later. Um, so, um, one of the things that I want to talk about this afternoon is some issues around some of the things that we see as really important to include in uh, training around classroom management. Um, but we see classroom management in a much broader sense uh, in our systems. We see it as being looking at behaviour and behaviour being a much more holistic thing than just managing uh, in the four walls of a classroom. And I'll come and talk about um, those ideas in a minute. One of the very big challenges that um, people uh, have in a role like mine is trying to actually get away from the little silos. You know, I have maths lecturers, I have science lecturers, I have literacy lecturers, um, I have behaviour management lecturers, and trying to actually put that together in a holistic sense um, is really difficult. One of the things that I had when I used to run um, directly classroom management programs, I had this wonderful idea that we, the experts in classroom management, would give the lectures, but all the tutorials would be taught by the curriculum lecturers. It was a wonderful idea that I had and it was totally and utterly opposed by the teachers or the lecturers in classroom management because it meant giving up part of the workload. You see, if you gave an English lecturer some workload for classroom management, there was less for us in special education to have as our load. So the people who opposed it most were actually the people who came out of special education and classroom management rather than the others. Um, just to say to you, we don't have a national curriculum at the moment. We have state uh, and territory education systems. They're independent. They're so independent that moving from one system to another becomes quite difficult um, because systems teach different things in different sequences. We don't have a national curriculum in teacher education at the moment, though the government is very intent on us moving towards that. Um, so we'll come back to you and get some advice about what to do and what not to do about having national teacher education curriculum. But, but at the moment we don't have it. Uh, and I'm not sure that it's going to actually um, solve um, the problems. Uh, I think having a set of broad principles where each of the universities operates within those sets of principles is probably something that's more important. So I'm not going to tell you about what is in a curriculum, what a curriculum looks like. I'm going to just talk to you about some of the ideas um, that we've incorporated both into in, um, pre-service training for teachers and I do a lot of work uh, at 
uh, until uh, this year, I was involved in a national training program for specialist behaviour teachers. People who are going to go and work everywhere from uh, supporting behaviour change in schools through to who are working in psychiatric institutions and juvenile justice institutions. And I still work, as I was saying to someone at lunchtime, I still work two days a week in schools. Uh, two days a week, two days a month. I'd like to work two days a week, but two days a month's written into my contract that I can actually spend in schools. Um, and I do a lot of work with, with classes and schools around that. These are just some ideas that, that we've incorporated into our program, is this um, concept that um, what makes behaviour disturbed is in the wrong place, the wrong time, in the presence of the wrong people and to an inappropriate degree. And that to me is really critical. These are basic principles that we're teaching around behaviour. And that basic principle says that no set of behaviour is of itself right or wrong. And if we start from that principle, then we can move forward. If I have a, a PE lesson outside and I've got a kid who just stands there and just kicks around instead of kicking the ball uh, in a soccer lesson or throwing a ball in the netball lesson, but in a mathematics lesson he's constantly moving around the room, I've got some behaviours that in one case is the right place, right time, appropriate degree, but in the other setting is inappropriate, wrong place, wrong time, presence of wrong people and to an inappropriate degree. And it also says what's really important up there is that what makes behaviour disordered. It isn't the kid that's disordered, but it's the behaviour that's disordered. So one of the things that we focus on a lot is to try to separate the child from the behaviour so that we actually see the behaviour separately to the child. And that's very hard for us to do. When we think about our own children, we love our own children, well, <clears throat> most of the time. Um, we love our own children and it's the behaviour that we see at a time that we don't like. But we still underneath fundamentally love our children. But we, we don't like something that's occurring at a particular time. So one of the things then is to understand that behaviour is not necessarily disordered all of the time. It's where it is, why it is and how it is. The other thing that we talk a lot about in our um, programs around uh, classroom behaviour or behaviour in general is that we try to talk about a concept of an ecosystem. Now, someone will say immediately, ha ha, ha ha, this is a model, this is not assertive discipline, this is not um, a choice theory, this is not teachers taking charge, this is an ecological model. Um, in a sense, I guess, theoretically, it could be seen to be that, but what we're saying to our teacher trainees is that essentially we have a space and this space could be a classroom, it could be a science laboratory, it could be um, a PE.